What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about smart breakers. So a smart breaker is a really cool piece of technology. It's a breaker that can be remotely controlled and operated by a monitoring service. It's kind of like a shunt trip breaker, sort of. Um, a shunt trip breaker, for the users that don't know, is a breaker that can take an event, a signal from something happening and tell a breaker to shut off rather than it requiring on the thermal uh, part of the breaker and the magnetic trip mechanism inside of it to sense a problem with current. So you can shut it off without there being a problem just by choosing to shut it off because an event happens. A smart breaker is the same way. Um, they can be controlled with really low voltages over network cable from somebody sitting in an office a thousand miles away. They can be turned off, turned on, and they can monitor if there's a problem. So a lot of different circuit breakers um, in the smart breaker space are designed differently. Some of them have, you know, four little pins and a connector that you have to connect uh, your another four pin connector to. Some of them actually have a little stab on the back of them that stabs right in behind the bus on a specific enclosure that's made that way. Some of them are operated through uh, electronics and some of them are motor operated. And there's even breakers that are smart enough to tell the operator if there's a problem with the load, they can monitor the load that that breaker is feeding and have diagnostics and understand what's going on if that piece of equipment is about to fail. But essentially they all do the same thing. They allow a monitoring service to have control remotely of that breaker. The benefit of these systems is not even just that they're remotely controlled, but most of the time they're programmed as well. So they have time programming. Uh, these systems can have zones where they can control entire zones of lighting. And if they set schedules, you know, they've got a computer program and they're setting all these different schedules. At 10 o'clock at night, we want this to happen. And at five o'clock in the morning, we want these loads to come on and all this stuff. They can, it's like a smart time clock essentially. Uh, but that's the true benefit and why these are used. Before I get into that, you should go check out rogersservices.com. Rogers is a large electric contractor uh, based in Georgia. They do work nationwide, so they've got techs in almost every state. Um, they do commercial service work and commercial construction. So if you're interested in getting that portion of the trade, uh, check out the link below. So how does a smart breaker actually physically work? Um, every smart breaker is going to have a load terminal, just like a normal breaker would. There's going to be a screw that you put your load wire on. Uh, they also have a low voltage connection to them, though, that you have to run a separate network cable to. So there's two different things you have to hook up with every one of these breakers. So how the system actually works with these smart breakers is there's a couple of different components. So first, I mean, obviously we have the breakers, right, that snap in, there's a low voltage connection. Well, that low voltage connection goes to a controller that's in the panel. That controller is the thing that takes the ethernet signal in, um, and that's how, you know, over ethernet, these people can control the turning off and on of these breakers. So the controller is one component. It takes ethernet in, it also has some outputs that it can control each individual breaker with a DC pulse. Where it gets that low voltage DC pulse is from a power supply that's also in the panel. So there's gonna be a power supply if your panel is like 208 or whatever the voltage is, it's gonna transform from that uh, line voltage that's coming in to a low voltage. And that low voltage is going to power that controller. So the controller is a low voltage controller. It actually gets its power from that uh, power supply. That's why you need the power supply. And then from there, you, uh, your loads are actually controlled low voltage. There's a DC pulse that is sent uh, low voltage to the control bus inside the panel to turn each one of the loads on or off. Now when a breaker goes bad, the monitoring service can tell that they don't have control of that breaker anymore. So they're going to issue a service call to have somebody come out and replace it. A lot of times they uh, will already send the material to the store. Sometimes you have to order the material, just depends on the system and where you're working. Uh, but then when you 
change this breaker out, uh, you just unhook the load, you unhook the network cables, you pull the breaker out, stick the breaker back in, connect those two things again, and then you call monitoring and say, hey, I've got everything hooked back up, do you see this breaker? And they'll say yes, and they'll say, okay, they'll let me cycle the breaker to make sure I have control over it, and they will remotely, right in front of you, shut it off and turn it back on. Uh, another good thing to test is all of these smart breakers have a little push button on them that is a disconnect switch. That little dip switch, if you look closely, says auto and manual. And what that is, is in auto, that means that the controller and the network has control over that breaker. So it allows the normal function, the scheduling, everything to work to control that breaker. But when you click it into manual mode, it takes the ethernet and the controllability away from anybody remotely. So it would just, essentially would just operate like a regular breaker when it's in manual mode. So just making sure, you know, if you're on a service call and for some reason they don't have control of this breaker and you go and look and that little dip switch has popped into manual, we'll walk up, click it into auto. Do you have control of this thing? Oh yeah. Well then that was an easy problem to fix. But if the breaker is bad, that's a whole different story. So just understand that um, this breaker is networked. It's remotely controlled, but it has to be in auto for that to be possible. If it's in manual, there is no control. Um, a lot of people think that these breakers, it's disconnecting the load when you switch that from manual to auto. It's not, it's just removing the low voltage connection that is controlling that breaker or reconnecting that connection. Some things to watch out for. These are expensive breakers. So don't drop them, mishandle them, put them somewhere where they're gonna get rained on. They're really expensive and they're really sensitive pieces of equipment. Another thing is make sure that you don't turn off other loads on accident. Most of the time, if you're working on one of these, especially like during the day, if you start shutting other loads off, accidentally flipping the handles because you bumped into them, you're gonna turn off the lights for the entire place or you're gonna turn off something critical. Um, so just be careful of that. Be very precise, take your time, do it slow. Now, if you have hot work procedures uh, where you cannot do this work live, then this is probably gonna be an after hours job for you. So at that point, you need to make sure that you turn off and lock out, tag out the entire panel. That way nobody can turn anything on behind you. Um, and that way you're really not worrying about what you're turning on, what you're turning off, and you can do that work so you're not working live. So that's pretty much it for smart breakers. They're essentially just a regular breaker with some smart stuff to them. Um, they do tend to be more expensive and they do require a little bit of finesse when you're on a service call with them. So just make sure that you take your time, do really, really good work. Um, make sure that you test everything. Don't ever leave a job and not have gone through monitoring to test and make sure everything works. Um, but that's it. Let me know if you guys have any other questions and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.